Let's do this then. Time for another preview on full-time Devils. Today is all about the game against Juventus in the Champions League. Really big game for Man United. I'm joined by this guy, Statman Dave's here. So Stats. Uh, at least we've got one person here who actually knows what they're talking about today. Uh, McCall is here as well, and John Shin is here too. <laughs> Something's just fallen off the wall at F FTD HQ in comedic fashion. So that's sort of like a good sign for how this week's going to go for Manchester United potentially. Good. Uh, so let's get straight into it. Uh, obviously, the wall. obviously, City coming up after Juventus. Absolutely massive week. Is it going to be as as bad as some people are saying, Dave? Or, or is this... Because we do sometimes pull it out the bag, don't we? Look, I'm going to be positive. Come on. I'll leave the negativity to the other two chaps. Come on. We're going to win the league. Um, but first up, we've got to beat Juve and we've got to beat City. Juve are a team that looks so flexible. They're kind of like where United should be right now as a side. and <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like watching United in the first 20 minutes against Bournemouth and then thinking about that performance versus a Cristiano Ronaldo Juve team is a little bit scary considering the Bala Ronaldo, they're kind of getting their vibes together now. The performance at Old Trafford was sort of the catalyst of that. The first time they kind of like bounced off each other in a really, you know, nice way to watch, but terrible for United, obviously. So mm. we're going to win away, though. We're going to nick a goal, sit gonna back. win? 1-0. I'm going to be happy. I'm happy it'll man. be interesting to see how we approach this one, though, because, mm. I mean... You could say that a draw would be like an amazing result for us in the dynamics the of the table. That, that's the thing. I think in the Champions League, you need 10 points. That's the game. Yeah. You need to get 10 points in this Juve game. If we get a pointer, that's great news. Again, you know, Valencia drawing with young boys was a great result for United last yeah. week or last Champions League match day, should we say. Right, I'm going to leave McCullough to last because I know he'll just depress me. Um, John, give me some more positivity, please. Tell me we're going to beat City. We're going to beat Juventus and our season is going to be back on track. <laughs> Everybody has their guns drawn, pointing at us, just get ready to fire on all, fire at us. And I think this is the opportunity for Jose Mourinho to really sort of turn this season around and cement his position here. I mean, it's not it's not been good. Everybody can admit that. It, the performances have not been good, period. The tale of two halves of Manchester United starting lethargic, negative, slow in the first half, and then somehow nicking a goal and sometimes coming away with a result in the second half. That might be good in some ways, given the, 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 the absolute disaster in the way that we've started. But nonetheless, if we can come out with a result against Juventus and, and, and really make some sort of a run in this Champions League, of course, I might sound very optimistic in that regard. But if we can come out with something in this Champions League run, especially this game against Juventus away, at, and it's going to be such a big boost for Jose Mourinho and Manchester United kicking on things forward. It's not one of those like you know away game against Cardiff where we come up with a with a 2-1, you know, last minute winner. It's not it's the the magnitude is completely different. And if Jose Mourinho and his boys can come out with the result in this game, um, and a strong fighting result, not one of those where you know you score it and you know you sit 90 minutes or so. If you can come out with some sort of strong result, it'll really be like you mentioned uh, that word catalyst for Jose Mourinho season to officially fully kick off and perhaps help us in our in our Premier League run. Exactly, because I'm looking at it from a sort of negative point of view, really, and thinking, you know, we've got these two massive games, it could potentially all go wrong, but could you imagine just how good it would be if we got two really good results with two really good performances? Could completely change the season. Adam, can you see it happening? <laughs> Possibly, you know. Oh! oh amazing! Yes! Nah, you like a mad... <laughs> sometimes. Um, nah, I don't... <laughs> Possibly could see a snatch of the result there. Um, but obviously, this, the cards are stacked against us, really. And when you look at the table, the likelihood is if we don't beat them, sorry, if we don't get a point, we're going to be third in the group when it comes to um, the last two games. And that's likely to mean we have to go to Valencia and get three points. So this game is massive for us, really. Even a draw, like you said, could prove to be huge in terms of the, the Champions League group. Confidence to win the game is not really there because of the way we've been playing in the last couple of weeks. We've been snatching some results, which I think, like John says, shows great signs for the team in terms of we're not performing, but we're managing to get results. That's still a good thing, um, no matter what way you look at it. But if we play like we did against Bournemouth, or even if like, the, like we did at Old Trafford against Juventus, they will punish us, and we know that against Juventus, it was far too easy for them, um, far too easy. I feel like we lacked a little bit of bite. We lacked a little bit of... Um, tenacity and just getting in their faces trying to win the ball back um we, we didn't do that enough in the in the home game so if we do that again in their home ground where the onus is on them to attack they're not going to sit back on the one goal as much we could seriously get hammered but i think if we play well if we defend well which we haven't done all season 
we could possibly grab a result because I think we saw we saw signs in the front three: Alexis Sanchez, Rashford, Martial. Um, that goal will be massive for Rashford as well. That there's something that could be worked on there. I thought Sanchez's movement was good. Romelu Lukaku didn't do enough against their back three. Um, he didn't stretch them enough. They are obviously world class centre halves, but what they are is pretty old and pretty slow. So if you get moving, you can cause them problems. And I think Romelu Lukaku just played into their hands. It was far too easy for them to win the ball back high up the pitch. And as a result, we're under pressure for a lot of the game. So it depends on how United defend. Um, and I think that front three, defending from the front, trying to press that back three, trying to win the ball back, trying to make interceptions, could help us get a result. But these lot have only, they haven't lost this season. And I think they've only drawn one game against Genoa, which was a shot result for them. So we're kind of up against it from there. Uh, so you mentioned Lukaku and Sanchez there, Mark. Obviously, the front three has been changing in recent weeks. Out of the forwards that we do actually have available, who would you say is our best front three at the minute? Uh, I think Martial's in there on form. Um, scoring goals. Obvs. Scoring goals. He's, he's playing very well. Um, I think, based on what I've seen recently of Sanchez and Lukaku, I'd play Sanchez. And on the right, you could go with uh, Lingard or Rashford. Obviously, Lingard's just returned, so Rashford's probably got his nose in front ahead of him. But that's with Mata playing centrally in my mind. I know that Jose sometimes picks him out on the right, and I think he could possibly be first choice there because he's been in fantastic form. But I would rather see Mata centrally in behind that front three of Rashford, Sanchez and um, and Anthony Martial. I'm not writing Romelu Lukaku off, though. Um, let, I think a lot of the criticism has been over the top. A lot of it has been unfair. A lot of the stuff that you see online is really like, is really vicious. And I, I, I find that unsettling when I see it from Manchester United fans because Romelu Lukaku is still a world-class striker. He's still a very, very good striker. And last season, he scored 27 goals, mm. the most goals he's ever scored in a single campaign. And that was with Manchester United not creating opportunities for him. We've seen how he performs for Belgium. Belgium are obviously a better side than us um, and they create chances for him. And I think he's not helped himself. His performances haven't been great yet. But I don't think we should write him off. I do think Sanchez, Rashford, Martial have to play in this next game. But writing him off is a little bit unfair because he's such a fantastic player. We need to help him and he needs to help himself a little bit, get back into form. And the rest hopefully should do him all right. I'm seeing what a lot of fans are putting online at the minute and you guys might disagree with me on this but um, obviously the criticism to Lukaku has maybe been slightly over the top although he hasn't been in great form but I think on the flip side of that you've seen people maybe pushing Sanchez a little bit more than he deserves like I don't really think that you know it's it's an obvious that he gets in the team above Lukaku I don't think he's done that much in the United shirt uh, John what do you think? Uh, I think uh, Rio on um, BT Sports said something very interesting. He said Jose Mourinho doesn't know what his best team is, and and I completely agree. I think on all departments, on all aspects, especially the front three, Jose Mourinho doesn't know what his best uh, front three is because <clears throat> there isn't a solid front three that's going to provide like a specific niche, a specific attribute that's just going to overpower everything else. You know, I think Jose Mourinho. Uh, obviously with a combination of injuries and whatnot, but Jose Mourinho is going to probably be picking his front three based on what each individual player can offer based on the opposition. I mean, normally so, normally when you're looking at, you know, perhaps let's say put, uh, on a hypothetical basis, if you have three world-class front three players, you'd play them irrespective of what the opposition is because you trust in their qualities and you trust that they have the the superiority to, to, to get some sort of result. But... I don't think Jose Mourinho, A, doesn't know what his front three is, I don't think, and I don't think our forward players really have that sort of strength in them to to really cement a place, irrespective of what the opposition is. Okay, so, okay, I know you yeah. say it's difficult for them to cement a place and Jose doesn't know, but who would you say are our best front three, John? For me, if I look at it, I, I right now, given the current conditions right now, I would definitely start Martial left if you look at it from that sort of that rainbow position. If you look at it, you have to start Martial left. He he is a firing on all cylinders this season, so that's the meant to, that position is locked. Then you look at the right side, like uh, Adam mentioned, you do have uh, options like you do have your Lingard, you do have your Rashfords and whatnot. But for me, I would go Rash uh, Lingard on the right, and I'd probably play uh, Rashford up top. The only position that's a little bit shaky right now is maybe. 
start Mata on the right. I think his creative abilities and his and his desire to want to play the ball in the first touch. I think if he builds that synergy with somebody like Rashford and somebody like Martial who can p- move quick, who's quick on their feet, you know, that that sort of one-touch football is exactly what we've, we've been dis- lacking so much in that final third. And, and if we can build that rhythm, maybe with Mata on the right. But for me, in terms of just, you know, pure quality, physique and whatnot, I would have to go Martial on the left, Lingard on the right, and Rashford up top. That's the problem for United, though. Our right-hand side is... Like, our left-hand side, we're starting to see something forming between Shaw, Pogba, and Anthony Martial. And on the right-hand side, right-back, the, the right-back's all up in the air. Who's going to be right-back? We knew played, this. We knew this in the summer. Yeah. We've got to go low, but he don't play. Wait, um, he's too young. He, he was never going to be a starter when we right signed him. On the side of the midfield, Fred plays, Herrera plays. Um, obviously, you've got Matic protecting him. He hasn't been, been in great form. And then on the right-hand side of the, the, the front three, it's always changing. So... There's never really any familiarity between, between the three. I think that's one of the biggest problems is it's kind of like you've obviously got this squad, you've got a number of really good attacking players. And I think one of the issues with some of their form is that they are in and out of the side and they're not consistently playing together. Like we take that Sanchez, Ma- uh, Martial looked really good against Bournemouth, but then is that consistently going to be played week in, week out? You're looking at Lukaku, right? In the ideal world, when Lukaku's in form, when he's unplayable, like he starts. Then you've got that left-hand side problem. Martial, in unbelievable form at the moment, he's got to be in there. But if Sanchez was any near, where near these levels at Arsenal, he should be in the side. And I think that is one of the issues, is that you know you look at that and think, oh, well, Matt's got to be in the right now, but where's Lingard going to be? Where's Rashford going to be? And I think that's the biggest problem, that maybe a forward three isn't what we need and we need four attacking players in there but then when we've played that the balance is off I knew this was going to There's happen so much I like... knew I, I had a feeling that when I what? come to Dave and say Dave what do you think is our best front three I had a feeling you'd go well we shouldn't actually be playing a front three we should be playing an inverted front five with so who is our <laughs> who is, who, what is our best striking option right now Dave it doesn't but have really, to be a front three it shouldn't be an over-reliance on certain players I think Mm. Jose Mourinho has consistently, sometimes it works good for, uh, for the benefit of the team and sometimes it works against the team. And we're seeing it work against the team at the moment. When it works well, like in his good days where he had solid players throughout and you had like the Lampards and the Makaleles, Terry's, Peter Cech and Drogba, that's a great spine. But at the moment, Manchester United's spine is all over the place. <laughs> Nemanja Matic is so poor at the moment. Smalling has gone backwards again. Like it seemed like he would find some sort of level, and now he's gone backwards again. Lindelof, fair play to him, he's been better, but still. And then further forward, Lukaku's been poor. So our whole spine to the team is just weak, and they don't seem to be getting changed or rotated. And it's working against the team at the moment. Whereas in other areas, you have the problem where it's being rotated too much, or like the, mm. it's just a bit all over the place. It, at the, the similar, similar with the front three, right? Would Pogba work in a front three? Like, all the best stuff Pogba's done, probably in his United career, are like those moments where he takes someone on wide, where he gets a ball into the box. Like, the, the winner against Bournemouth, you know, that's reminiscent of the goal he assisted against Newcastle, where he's literally just beat the fullback and gone. Is Pogba, should Pogba be playing in the front three? And I think that is the biggest problem for Man United and Mourinho at the moment, is what is the solution and what's the consistent solution for certain positions? Right, we're going to see what these guys think the solution is now with your predicted 11s. You can have a quick look at the league there. You can see who's towards the top. Oh, I'm top of the league. Averaging 11 per week. Where are you actually? I'm top of the league, guys. No, you're not. Look. Right, well, there's me. Statman Dave. 11 out of 11. 11 appearances. Just absolutely. Statman Dave's current score is 8.7 after seven appearances. Mine's 8.3 after three appearances. McCullough's is 8.2 after five. And John Shin is second bottom of the table. You're in the relegation zone, John. Uh, Seven look, point. Look, you guys, look, you guys had me start these goddamn previews in the beginning of the damn season when Jose Mourinho didn't even know how to freaking wipe his own ass. So fuck, I have to pick like two Someone players. Still doesn't, John. <laughs> the manager doesn't know who he's playing. How are we supposed to know? So let's just take a load of uh, the wild Wait, we gases. Can't, we can't even get to home games right now. Never mind. Like, <laughs> Uh, John, tell me what's your starting eleven, or what do you think the starting eleven is going to be? I'm going to go very similar to what they started in Bournemouth. I'm going to go David De Gea in goal with a back four of Shaw, Lindelof, Smalling, mm-hmm. and uh, Young. Uh, I'm going to switch up the midfield three. I'm actually going to sit Matic out. I mean, this season, for those of you, for those of the viewers that have been following me on Twitter, 
I've been very, very vocal about how I don't trust Matic playing in week in, week out. The dude needs a rest. The dude needs to calm down. The dude needs to sit. One way or another, we need to get him rotated. And I think Herrera, Herrera's, I guess there's things that he does. I guess there's things that he do, uh, he does on the training pitch that doesn't really warrant a position um, in the eleven. But I can I trust in Herrera to to come up with a result. I think I think over the years he's built on that maturity, and I think he can play that Matic role. Whether or not we play in a single pivot with uh, with Herrera in the pocket, or we play with a double pivot where we have Herrera and Fred, who does who knows? I just want Herrera in that middle alongside Pogba and Fred, and going forward in a front three, I'm going to start Martial on the left. Lingard, I don't think he's quite ready, so I'm going to probably start Mata on the right and I'm going to go Rashford up top. Have you dropped Lukaku and Sanchez? Yes. Interesting. Uh, Adam, who's your starting 11, mate? I would, I would like to see that midfield, but we won't. So I'm just going to put that in there before I give my team. Um, David De Gea in goal. Uh, I think Ashley Young will continue at right back. What has happened between Jose, Valencia and Bay? Something's Those gone three on, used to be really good friends and now it's... I don't think the two are related, but it's, something's happened there. Um, Lindelof, Smalling, Luke Shaw. Um, Luke Shaw, every game he's started this season, he's played a full game. How good is that? That's pretty amazing. Um, well, so well, I've been I, really appreciating Luke Shaw playing. Um, I wouldn't play Matic. I'd like to see Fred start, uh, but I think Matic will start. I think Herrera's second half performance against Bournemouth has earned him a start. Um, so I think he'll come in with Pogba. Um, and then the front three, I think we will see. It'd probably be typical that Rashford finally got that goal and then he gets dropped. Um, so I'm half tempted to go with Lingard, but I'll go with Rashford, Sanchez and Martial. Um, I think Jose, sometimes it works well for us. Sometimes it works against us because he kind of ignores the task at hand like he'll just stick with a team that does well and sometimes maybe you do need to just tweak it a little bit um, but I think he'll stick with that Sanchez, Rashford and Lukaku uh, sorry Martial Sanchez's movement was a lot better um, and I hope Lukaku was watching that because it's what we need from him you can kind of accept if they don't score when Rashford and Sanchez play because they're still working the defence you still feel like the fullback or the, or the centre halves have come out of it think, feeling tired and getting some dirt on their shorts. With Romelu Lukaku, it's way too easy for them when they're not scoring. And I just think he needs to start doing the basics again properly to before he gets into his team. Big game, though. So, yeah, just to make it clear, we are recording today's preview before Jose Mourinho's pre match conference. So, um, if he comes out and he's got his arms around Bay and Valencia, then yeah, we didn't know that was going to happen. Dave, what's your 11? I'm quite happy that both the guys have got Ander Herrera in the team. Yeah, I think he deserves it. I think he's got to start. Yeah. I, think, I think after the performance, the impact that he made off the bench, the energy, the passing, what United need. But I, similarly, I liked how Fred played. Fred got a lot of criticism, obviously, missed that big chance, but I thought overall pressed really well. In this game, I think you need both of them. And I agree with the guys that it should be Pogba, Fred, Herrera, being what John was saying, double pivot, single pivot. I'd probably go with a double pivot, pushing Pogba a little bit higher up, being more of a 10. <clears throat> but I think it'll be Matic. I think Matic, Pogba, Herrera. You're looking at the back four is going to be unchanged from the Bournemouth game. You're thinking the front three is the other interesting point. I think it will be Mata, Sanchez, Martial. Quite like some of the stuff. I'd have mentioned the movement, the fluidity, the interchange between Sanchez and Mata was actually really nice. They were switching positions. And I think, although Rashford probably deserves a start, don't think he'll get a start. Maybe have a big impact off the bench. As much as I like their teams, yours is going to be yours, isn't it? <laughs> probably. <laughs> Matic, Matic is playing. Matic is playing. Uh, right, now the part of the preview, which we always find difficult, especially when we're playing really small teams like this, where we can't really recognise any of the players. Um, Juventus, what's the biggest thing that we need to be worried about from them? They've got a Portuguese player, uh, I think. That's yeah, all right. I think so. Um, <laughs> an Argentinian. Decent midfielder in there as well. But yeah, no, it's going to be an easy game. <laughs> Adam, what's the biggest thing, uh, the biggest uh, thing that we need to worry about with uh, with Juventus, apart from like the obvious one? Is it a Portuguese lad John about Cancelo, is it? That's the one. That's what <laughs> I was thinking. Right back, very good. Over. Left foot, right foot, crosses with the inside, outside. Don't do this. He's, he's going to score now. He's, he's going to score. A good, very, very good player. That's what we were talking Obviously about. Obviously, he's going to score. Of course, he's going to score. Um, yeah. Not, I think they've, 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 they've got pretty much a full squad. I think only Bernadeschi and Emre Can are out, um, which doesn't really matter to them because they've got luxuries all over the pitch. 
obviously, um, Cristiano Ronaldo's a threat, but I thought at Old Trafford, uh, Dybala was excellent. Mm. Um, it was absolutely, absolutely. fantastic, and uh, it's nice, isn't it? It's bloody nice, nice having, having all those attacking options. You think Cuadrado, <laughs> Douglas Costa, to like. Fair, to be fair, we have got some players that that Juventus have wanted. You know, Sanchez, Martial. Mm. You believe the rumours? They wanted those players. We got some <laughs> players that are pretty good ourselves. I think the problem for Ross is our defence, and I think when you see us coming up against a team like Juventus that can move the ball around like they can, that have got that Mandzukic out on the. He's, he's out wide, but he could equally come central and win win aerial presence. Same with Cristiano Ronaldo, who's equally good out wide as he is in the middle. Dybala dropping deep, and it's it's going to be a difficult game, man. Um, but we've had some classics at Juventus. If only we could get Ryan Giggs playing, he's usually good for a goal. Mm, very good for a goal. <laughs> uh, John, in the week, I uh, saw Gary Neville on Twitter say that he thinks Juventus are, well, that Juventus are his tip to win the Champions League this season. Do you think they'll Put do it? his neck out a bit, any? <laughs> Bold lad. <laughs> well, I don't know about winning the Champions League, but they, they definitely are probably the favorites, uh, given the given the quality of the squad and the depth that they have. I mean, you can't you cannot deny that. It's just you must be an absolute fool to deny that Juventus aren't one of the contenders or the or the favorites to win that damn title. Uh, the, they the, are the favorites, isn't it? Whatever, Real, whatever the hell. This- just sat the manager and. Yeah, exactly. I mean, given given the conditions of the other European elites, I mean, Juventus definitely probably are the front runners. Uh, but if you look at that squad, there's just depth all around. Uh, I think for me, Diabala was one of the most annoying players on that pitch. And and like Dave mentioned in the beginning, you know, he that was the game where we really saw uh, Diabala and Ronaldo sort of click. That synergy was slowly starting to build, and unfortunately, it had to build in front of Manchester United. So uh, I think that I think Dybala more than Ronaldo is 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 a bit of a worry uh, for me. Um, of course, I'm not saying that that's with a huge asterisk. Of course, Ronaldo is obviously a scary ass player, but nonetheless, Dybala is. I think he's the one sort of orchestrating, and we really need to make sure that we somehow suppress Dybala. And of course, they have qual- you know qual- quality like Quadrado, your Douglas Costas, mm. Mandzukic up top is also a huge threat. You know they have quality all around, and it's it's going to be a battle of it's going to be a battle of quality and just a, just absolute pure guts determination. If we can't lock them down, then it's a, it, there's there's no way we can get a result. Right, right. let's stop. Just last little bit tactically will be interesting because they start out with a four three three and then they switch to a four four two and look to break. I think United were quite weak down the left hand side defensively. Quadrado, Dybala, and Ronaldo were quite you know they were attacking down the element, and the guy that you know as I mentioned before, Cancelo. That's going to be the issue that United defensively need to understand that's a threat. And having someone like Ander Herrera maybe in there as well could help that problem out. And enough of this, though. We've sang too much enough of Juventus' of pre- uh, praises. Like This isn't a Juventus channel. This is a Manchester United channel. So we need to figure out how we're going to really beat them. What are the weaknesses? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, Predicting. No, <laughs> well, look, yo. Their defence is amazing, yeah. But some, some pace like Sanchez and Rashford and Martial... Hmm. Can cause them problems, but we just sat off them so it was so mm. easy for them at Old Trafford. And you, you're thinking if you're playing like that at home, when when we've got our fans behind us and and they're a little bit thinking we don't really have to win this game, a draw will do. If we, if we play like that at home, away from home, it's even more a bit daunting. You know what? You're going to respect them like that. We need to be like in their faces a little bit. Right then, let's wrap up today's preview. Um, I'm actually quite excited now, seeing how seeing how that United team do against the world's best, essentially. Score predictions before we get off, Dave. One all draw. Yes, I was going to say one all draw. I'll say two all draw. Sod it, we're going to score two. Um, John, what do you reckon? Uh, I'm going to go two two draw as well. <laughs> Three draws. Come on, Adam, say we're going to win. One nil. Tony Marshall scores. Yeah! Yeah! That's it. <laughs> that was so partridge. I'm the radio man. Right, we're getting <laughs> off. Uh, thank you very much for watching the preview today. Very excited for the game. We're going to be in town watching it and speaking to Reds after it as well, after in Manchester. So we will catch you there. See you soon in a bit. Laters.